So let's say, for example, I need to build a nested list from scratch, and I've already built out the outer uh, list that I'm going to be working off of, molt table. And let's say, for example, I literally want to build the multiplication tables for some x, y, you know, uh, constraints. Okay, well, I need to build that, and I want to have sort of uh, you know, on the first row, it would be uh, that row times some number of columns, uh, so to speak. So we'll say that uh, my rows, I'm going to just arbitrarily say 10, uh, and then my columns, also 10. Again, so the way you think about this is I want to build a multiplication table of uh, every digit from 0 to 10, uh, and then see what it's multiplied by with sort of the columns of 0 to 10 as well. So how could I go about building sort of this structure? So to start, the way I like to uh, think about this is what I like to do is build a temporary list uh, for sort of each row of my table. So again, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> for I in range rows. Remember, range is just going to generate that zero to uh, whatever number we specify in it. So in this case, it would generate zero to nine, uh, but we can do some fancy, you know, adding and subtracting to fix that. But again, I like to build out sort of a row to work off of, row square brackets. Again, the way to think about this is I'm just going to focus on now this temporary smaller uh, list that currently is empty, but I'm going to add to it as I go through sort of the columns, if you will. And so that's exactly what I'll do for J in range calls. Now I'm using I and J, these are very common uh, variables, especially uh, here um, for in a for loop, typically because I is short for index. Why we use J is because it's the next letter after I. Uh, if we needed to go even further, uh, we would use K. Uh, that's more just rules of the world, you know, common practice that someone invented once upon a time and we all just sort of did it. Uh, but anyways, we're now dealing with the fact that, okay, I am going to just for our sake, start with printing I and J. Once again, that just is going to tell me, it, you know, it doesn't solve my problem. It doesn't uh, give me the answer, but you can see it's at least confirming what I thought. I'm getting zero to nine, or rather my columns. So I is always gonna be uh, zero while I go through all of my J's uh, or my columns of uh, zero to nine as well. Obviously, again, I want to, I'll, I'll work off of, since, you know, zero times anything is just going to be zero, I'll do one to 10 since I'm, I'm looking off of those. Well, in that case, I'll just build a very simple calc uh, that is I plus one times uh, J plus one. And the same kind of thing, oh, I didn't print it. Same kind of thing, what I should see if I print this out is again just sort of the uh, multiplication table, but not quite built just yet, right? It, it, I just printed, so everything's on its own line. I haven't built my multiplication table uh, just yet. But that's where that temporary row that I worked off of can be beneficial, because again, that uh, is now just floating in space, and what I can do with it is say row.append. I can take the calculated number that I just made, and rather than just printing it, I can append it to row. And the last thing I will do is I'll just do first a print on that row. Now this isn't going to magically, it's not the same as storing it in the multiplication table, but it's going to look very similar. And that's exactly what you can see is now I've created effectively this row that is the multiplication uh, at any particular uh, X or uh, to any particular location of one and uh, of two numbers. Uh, so, you know, uh, one times one to ten, uh, two times one to ten, three times one to ten, etc., etc. 
but the point is, as of right now, it's still only constrained to row, and we're only still working off of a, uh, a single uh, list, a single dimensional list. But what I can do is I can come in, finally, and so now that I've uh, built out my row, I can come in with my molt table and do the exact same thing. But rather than just append a single number, I can append mult or I can append the entire list to my multiplication table and as a result I'm getting a multi-dimensional list. Now what I can do with this is I can uh, do some calculations. So if I, or not do some calculations but do some lookups. So mult table uh, if I wanted to know uh, two times I don't know Eight. I know that we know that that's 16, but what we should see here is not because we're doing, uh, we are, we're adding a one to it. So if I were to remove that, if I were to just do, including zeros in this case, if I were to just continue including zeros, uh, then Mult table two times eight, or referencing the second row uh, and the eighth column, I should see 16. Oh, okay. Okay. This is where I did not run everything, uh, so this is my fault. Uh, mult table is now giant, because I've technically ran this twice, and just to even see this. It's going to be a hideous mess where I still have all my ones and now I have zeros going on there as well. That was my fault. So let me start over, reset my molt table. Now run through that. And now, without further ado, uh, I think that we were working off of eight. Now, the second row at the eighth column should say 16.